Greetings AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here for our final video from topic 6.11 with integration by parts. We're going to look at example 6 and as I alluded to in some of the videos that led up to this particular video is that we're in for a little treat here. We're, we're going to see what usually is, is called labeled classified as the trickiest type of integration by parts problem that you can see. So if you guys are able to handle this, then in large part, integration by parts shouldn't give you a whole lot of trouble. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this guy says. So remember, first of all, before we scroll down, we are going to be using the acronym LEATE to identify the U within our integration by parts problem. And we're also working under the assumption that you're pretty confident with the formula for integration by parts, the u times v minus integral v du or of dove we sometimes alluded to. So let's go ahead, scroll down, and take a look at this bad boy. We are wanting to integrate e to the 3x times the cosine of x. And you're going to notice that it does contain, this integrand contains two transcendentals. We don't have the benefit of having an algebraic piece like an x squared or an x cubed. And that pretty much means that the tabular method, this wonderful shortcut that we've kind of started to fall in love with, unfortunately won't apply here. And the reason is because you cannot take a derivative of successive u's and diminish that result to zero like you need to for the tabular. So we're going to go back to the drawing board. We're going to go back and use the normal integration by parts setup. So we're going to select our u and our dv. And if we go according to Lie, we start with logarithm. We don't see one. Inverse trig, we don't see any. Algebra, we don't see any. That takes us to t trig. And we see the cosine of x. So we certainly could throw the cosine of x here. And that would leave the e to the 3x to be here. Now, I made some mention in a previous video. Honestly, by the time you get so far down into Liate, like the t and the e, your choices for u and dv are interchangeable, and it won't change the complexity of the problem. So u and dv here could have been switched. I'm going to stick to this setup. Not that I'm saying that this setup is mm, perhaps maybe a little bit trickier than the other setup. I want to talk about that when I finish this first. But I don't want to confuse you by switching the order of the T and the E because the focus is on the solution to this problem, not the way that you can kind of maneuver through the Li8. So I'll get back to that here in just a second. Let's go ahead and take our derivative of U. And that would be negative sine of x dx. And if we take the integration of v, this is what's tricky here. You're going to have one-third e to the 3x. One-third e to the 3x. OK, so what we do know is that our integration of e to the 3x cosine of x, and if there was ever a time that you wanted to write down the original integral, this would be the time. This would be the particular problem where that's going to be very helpful. Let's assemble u times v, which is 1 third. I'll put the e to the 3x first along with my cosine, and then we'll subtract integral of v du. Now, as I'm doing this, as I subtract the integral of v du, let's notice that du is already negative. So I could go ahead and plop a plus there to kind of take care of the double negative situation. And then I'll place my 1 third e to the 3x here first, and then maybe my sine of x next, followed by dx. But I, I highly encourage you to start uh, uh, combining consolidated pairs of negative signs when you see them so that you don't have them all floating throughout the problem. All right, well, if you look at this integral, this integrand that we have here, we'll probably notice that that looks like it's an integration by parts yet again, and it certainly will be. Um, it has a similar makeup as the original problem, but with a sign uh, function there instead of the cosine. So we're going to go ahead and use a u substitution here. Now, I uh, had alluded to in a previous video 
how if you use a second iteration of integration by parts, that proper, good, sophisticated notation might suggest that you put subscripts around all of your U's and V's for your first pass through this, and then subscripts of two would be appropriate here. In my class, that's something that I, I don't necessarily require. I know there could be uh, some folks in higher education at the college level who are probably a little bit more strict with some of the way that these are presented. So you're just going to have to check with your teacher to see what they want you to do. So we're going to go ahead and use the same a philosophy. We're going to let the, whoops, I'm sorry, that's not the philosophy we want. We're going to let the trig word be the U, and we're going to let the exponential piece, including the one third, travel along with the DV2. And it's also very important I mention you don't want to change your philosophy here. You don't want to switch this and say, oh, I'm going to let DV be the sign this time because it will backfire. You have to be consistent with the way that you originally set up your first integration by parts. Let's take the derivative of U2 and we get positive cosine of x dx. And let's take the integration of DV2. So V2 would be 1 ninth e to the 3x. Now hopefully you're not bothered by that 1 ninth. Remember when you integrate e to 3x in this case, you're doing a u substitution. The u is the 3x, the derivative is the 3, and we kind of offset with that 1 third. All right, let's assemble. Um, what the heck, you guys? I want to go ahead and rewrite the original problem. You're going to start seeing why that's important here in a moment. And let's not forget that we already had a one-third e to the 3x cosine of x as part of our solution. Now we're going to join that with a plus u times v. So I have a one-ninth e to the 3x sine of x. And then I'm going to subtract an integral with one-ninth e to the 3x cosine of x dx. So hopefully you see that we've assembled the integration by parts correctly. Using the cursor here, we have a u times a v minus the integral of our v times our du. And of course, we're talking about subscripted two versions of those. Well, when you take a step back and you look at that integral, you're like, whoa, wait a minute. That is another integration by parts problem, right? And if we continue this ad nauseum, it, it's going to look like a dog chasing its tail. We're, we're never going to like find resolution with this. And so we have to know when to stop. And it turns out this is where we stop. And the reason is because if you take a very close look at this integration, problem that you have right here. Let me use a pen. What we notice is that looks an awful lot like our original problem. That looks an awful lot like this e to the 3x cosine of x, which just happens to be over here on the left side of the equation. That's what we are trying to solve for. That integration of e to the 3x cosine of x is our variable, if you will. So the trick here with this problem is to move this integral over to the left side of the equation. Now, it's likely that you may not have to actually physically write this step when you all are working these out because you can do the, uh, the algebra work in your head. But I wanted to show you that you can physically add those two integrals that are on the left side. Now, I could have decided to move this 1 ninth out in front to give it a better kind of disposition, but I want you to see that you're essentially taking one of these integral expressions and you're adding 1 ninth of the same integral expressions. 1 plus 1 ninth is 10 ninths. And you're dealing with that integral expression. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and write out everything else that was on the right side. Up until I get to the integral that was added over, of course. So this is where I'm sitting right now. Get you guys a, a chance to kind of take a take a look at that if you're writing it down, kind of take it in. Remember our goal, our goal is to solve for this. If you can tell me what this is equal to, you have solved this integral problem. And right now that orange boxed in expression isn't by himself, of course. He has a 10 ninths coefficient in front that all we need to do is divide over to the right side or multiply by its reciprocal, and that will end up being our solution. So if you do just that, that will isolate this e to the 3x cosine of x's integral. And then honestly, to make things easy, let's just multiply by the reciprocal 9 tenths and just write it out in front. And this answer is perfectly acceptable. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, however, you can see that if the 9 tenths were distributed through, it could clean up a few things, I suppose. And we would have maybe a 3 tenths coefficient in front of the e to the 3x cosine of x. We would have a 1 tenth coefficient in front of the e to the 3x sine of x. You're just basically looking out for that if there was a multiple choice option with that look. But outside of that, you, you could factor out a 1 tenth e to the 3x, so it could look a lot of different ways. Now, I'll tell you what, we worked awfully hard on this question, so I think we deserve to know whether or not we got it correct. Who knows? Maybe I made a mistake. I certainly hope not. So let's take a look at what our graphing calculator says. So here we are with our trusty TI Inspire calculator. We're going to go ahead and set this up with the integration. And we were integrating e to the 3x, I believe it was, multiplied by the cosine. With respect to x, and the results I get, if I can move my camera picture out of the way, is a little bit different than what we had in terms of our pencil paperwork. It looks like they've just factored out only the e to the 3x and wrote it after the fact, but we have to realize that there is a 3 tenths coefficient in front of the cosine, a 1 tenth coefficient in front of the sine, and if we compare that with our pencil paper work, we should be okay. And as you can see, we certainly have that 3 tenths coefficient alongside our cosine and the 1 tenth alongside the sine. Like I said, it's certainly the toughest version of integration by parts, but if you practice through these a little bit, I think you're going to get pretty comfortable. They're also pretty recognizable because it's typically a combination of an exponential like an e to some power with a trig word. I have a special name for these. I call these the add over or subtract over steps named after whatever we had to do at this point right here in this case this would be an add over but there are some versions of these where this sign is innately going to be a plus instead of a minus where you would subtract over so just take a look at the problems approach them as you normally would and just anticipate a second iteration that's going to have that special step Certainly hope this helps. I want to thank you for watching all through the uh, integration by parts videos. Our next series of videos are going to deal with uh, using integration to find um, uh, using a technique of integration uh, that involves partial fraction decomposition. Anyhow, we'll see you next time.